there. Diana from Adirondack Girl at Heart. I teach vintage and antique lovers how to create successful antique businesses that they love. One of the ways I do that is through these videos. Today, I'm gonna to be focusing on one specific estate sale haul. In other words, everything that you're gonna to see today came from one estate sale that I attended last weekend over in Massachusetts. It was a great sale. We had a lot of fun. I made some pretty amazing finds. I'm going to start with a couple of wooden finds. I'm not sure what this was meant to be. It's got a nail in the end. Somebody that I was in line with said that it looked like a paddle. I think that's terrible. <laughs> it was a dollar. I bought it for a project. I was thinking um, possibly a sign stenciling something here or hanging some of my mini wreaths down anyway for a dollar i thought that was that was a good deal and then this is interesting this is what i would call a make do i did pay two dollars for it obviously it's got a fork on the end the handle is made out of oak and i believe the handle original of uh, the original handle for the fork probably broke or cracked and then they replaced it with this i just thought that was cool i'm going to put some wood salve on there and bring out the beautiful um surface of the oak and i think that that would be i would sell that for probably twelve dollars ten to twelve dollars and then i picked up this cutting board um, nothing like super fantastic or anything, but usually it's the big, bigger breadboards that have these pieces on the end. So I liked that. It was $2. Got a little problem <laughs> there. I'm going to clean it up. I have a blog post about, um, taking care of cutting boards. I'll link to that below and I might sand this or I might leave it. I don't hate it. Um, probably 20, 20 to 22 dollars for that piece. And I picked up a couple of baskets. I'm in love with this one. It has a little, that's the only problem right there, that little corner. It was six dollars at the estate sale, and it, uh, it's worth about 35 to 45. It's ash splint, it's very lightweight because of that. And um, it's got this straw wrapping here on the handle and right around the edge. And like I said, cost $6 worth about 35 to 45. And then I picked up this newer basket for a dollar at the estate sale. So this last year at the Christmas craft fair, I sold an angel, a handmade angel. So picture head right here, a cool architectural piece for wings. It had a little basket in the front with some bottle brush trees in it. It was adorable. So I'm going to recreate that for next year. It sold for $28, that angel did. Two pieces of ironstone. Here is an ironstone serving dish, a vegetable serving dish. Just look at that finial. Looks like a, could be a pumpkin, a pepper. Not sure exactly the pattern. I will try to put that in the description. You can probably see that it is not in perfect condition. The lid is perfect. The lid could be sold separately. I think for 20 to $25, see the chips right there. And um, that's why it was priced at $3, which is fantastic, right? If it had been in perfect condition. This is by Meekin, an English ironstone manufacturer. So this is an older piece I would date to the last half of the 19th century, you know, 18, probably 60 to 1880, something like that. And then I picked up a second piece, not quite as old, um, but still really nice. It has some browning on it, which should not really detract from it. The pattern is called bamboo, which you can see on the handle there on the lid. And it was $10. 
And this is by uh, John Edwards, another English uh, pottery. That mark right there, that incised mark, will tell me the actual date. And so I will put that in the comments. So um, this piece should sell for about 45 to 50 dollars. And I do have on my website an article all about ironstone, collecting ironstone, and another article about how to clean it, and then another that is a um, kind of a mini price guide. So I will link to those. So while we're on pottery, I picked up this little piece that looks kind of like a flower frog to me. So that's why I wanted to get it because I have written extensively about flower frogs and have a video about them. It's red wear, nice uh, decoration. It was a dollar. And after some research, I will you know, determine what it really is. But as a flower frog, I will price it at about 18, 18 to 20 dollars. And then this was sort of a serendipitous purchase. I bought two of these mugs. They are marked on the bottom, imported and bottled by Fred Myers uh, and Co. of Baltimore 80 proof. So that's talking about this Myers rum. So these were probably giveaways with a bottle of Myers rum in a liquor store. Um, they were 50 cents each. Like I said, I picked up two. I need to do a little research, but I think they're worth about $10 each. Okay, let's take a look at some metal finds from the day. Do you love this alarm clock? Oh my goodness, chunky and the numerals. Oh. It is not working. It says ESCA, and it says down below um, Baltimore, USA. So this is made in the US, and it cost $5. As a decorative piece, I think it's worth, probably we'll sell it on Etsy for $40, 35 to $45 for that. I think that's amazing. I would like to keep it, but. You can only keep so much, right? You have to sell. Here's another little piece, little globe. It's not signed at all anywhere, but globes like this miniature in any sort of form sell really well. It was a dollar and I will price it at 25 to $30. Here's a tobacco tin, it was $2. Should sell for about 10 two Christmas pieces. There was a couple of boxes of Christmas ornaments that were 50 cents each. This one is a little shelf sitter and it's got a tag on it, hand painted uh, Japan. You can see that right there. He should sell for about $10. He was 50 cents. I thought this mandolin was really beautiful. 50 cents should sell for about 10. Signed, made in the Philippines on the back. Last few, I have a few glass pieces and then I have some books to show you. Here is a tray. I'm not sure this would have been part of something, um, maybe a wooden box that had this milk glass insert. It is signed on the back, the American Cabinet Company, Wisconsin. And um, I think it will be great for displaying jewelry. That's what I'm thinking of. It was a dollar. And if I were going to sell it, I would probably price it at about 20 to 25. Here's a, um, I'm gonna call it a laboratory thingy. I'm not very sciencey. So it's this container and then three glass rods. It was $2 and I have sold in the past successfully lab equipment like this. So I will probably price it at about 18, 15 to 18 for that. This is one of my favorite finds from the day. It's uh, Mason's patent, uh, November 30th, 1858, which there are lots, lots of these jars, but this is a, a 
quite an old one. It's got this uh, mark on this, I think that's a, like a Maltese cross is what that's called on the back. And this really tiny little zinc lid that is marked consolidated fruit on the inside. As you can see, paid $5 for it. It has a ground top. So that means that it was hand blown into a mold. I think it's worth about 35 to 40, but I am going to research it. eBay is a great place to sell um, more valuable uh, canning jars, but I do sell quite a few from my antique booth also. So I'll have to think about that. And then I picked up this lid. They actually threw it in for free. And I do like to pick these up because often I will find jars that are missing the correct lid. So I have a little collection of those. So let's take a look now at some books. So the books were $3 for hard covers, which is a little expensive for me, but 50 cents for soft covers. So I picked up two hard covers. First, this Joy of Cooking. This edition dates to 1972. It is in such great condition to me. It looks like it was hardly used. The cover is so clean and inside is clean and the spine is pretty firm. And so I think it will sell for about 25 to $30 on eBay or from my antique booth. And then I, so I have certain categories of books that I have found sell really well and I have an article on my website all about that. The 10 categories of books that sell very well. And books about Lincoln are one of the categories. Biographies is actually the category, but Lincoln are the best. So um, I paid $3 for Lincoln with a really nice condition um, dust jacket and it was originally $50. So I hope to get 20 or more, 20 to $25 for that from my antique booth. So those were two really good book finds. So then I picked up some soft covers, bird books, another category in that article that sell really well. So I paid 50 cents for it. It's priced, uh, $19.95, it should sell for about $8. I picked up a Fanny Farmer paperback because I have a cookbook price guide that I'm working on, a, a, like a really large price guide. I have a mini cookbook price guide on my website and articles about collecting cookbooks as many different editions of specific cookbooks that I come across, I like to include them. Here's a soft cover cookbook from the Bicentennial, and I find that they sell well also. So I picked that up. It should sell for about six. And then the last book is How to Build Shaker Furniture. And our area is known for the shakers. They had several settlements in the area. There's one right near me um, where I actually sell um some handmade and vintage goods and um so this should sell there's no price oh yeah this sold in, uh, is priced at nine dollars 8.95 and i will probably price it at ten dollars and that's it for that specific estate sale all those fines that was about fifty dollars for all of that and so, like I said, it was a really fun day. I hope you enjoyed seeing them. I hope you'll leave a thumbs up, uh, a comment, subscribe to my channel, that would be awesome. And as always, happy hunting.